Let's take it slow Where you go, I go to And if you hit the bottom, I'm going down with you Let's take it slow Who cares where we gotta be You know you'll have a good time wherever you're with me Let's take it I'm Wayne, and this is Mobius, our uh, soon-to-be home, and we are here at the Ball Yachts Shipyard. It's a national holiday today, so we thought we'd take advantage of the quiet, or relatively quiet as a shipyard can ever be, to take uh, you up on your many, many suggestions for please can we release you a new video tour of the boat such as she is. Today is July 15th. So we're... Uh, the holiday is not tax day. It's yeah. Turkish Democratic and National Unity Day. Anyways, the good news is we... Uh, the bad news is we have no workers uh, today. Everybody's appropriately taking some time off. We thought we'd take advantage of the quiet to get in here and do a video for you. So we'll do a walkthrough. We'll do a little bit of light editing. Uh, we just don't really have much time right now. We're still trying to get the boat launched as soon as we possibly can. And therefore, we're devoting all of our time to that. But we'll polish something up reasonable so it's fun for you to watch. And get that posted in a minute and today we'll just take you through inside and outside so you can see where we're at and um, make a little more sense if you've been following us on the vlog perhaps see you in a minute okay we'll start here on the swim platform and start to give you a tour of the external parts of the boat as we've discussed to you previously we've got the temporary lettering on here for registration purposes the boat is registered in jersey one of the two channel islands that do um, british registry flagging so that's how we're flagged uh, this is the entryway i think you'll have seen already into the workshop watertight door goes in there and then these lovely spiraling staircases uh, matching ones on either side this is what we call the hazmat hazardous material locker and so that's there for storing uh, you know anything that could be flammable or otherwise dangerous we don't have that much frankly because we've converted the boat into we're not converted we've made the boat into a single fuel boat no gasoline no propane our tender runs uh, on diesel it's an inboard 110 horsepower yanmar uh, engine and our barbecue which we'll show you in a minute is also electric so we're down to just having th a great storage area because it has no access to the inside of the boat so paint oil diesel fuel that kind of thing either smelly fumey dangerous flammable stuff goes in there and then we've got this lovely set of stairs on either side going up uh, you'll see how our stanchions are done uh, all out of uh, 40 millimeter thick wall five millimeter thick walls uh, aluminum so no stainless on the boat if we can possibly help it and we have delrin uh, bushings or sleeves that go in between these external stanchion posts or uh, stanchion um, tubes and the posts themselves so that we have no aluminum to aluminum contact to get corrosion in there uh, we have these massive guys here for fair leads so this is two inches thick 15 millimeters of uh, solid aluminum and this extends down uh, uh, to about uh, here with uh, inside the boat so that it's tied in integrally to the rest of the hull and then we'll probably use Dyneema soft shackles off of here for a block or a, um, a, a snatch block and then be able to bring let's say a line over to a, a kedging anchor or maybe a dock line over here in really high winds bring it turn it through the block and take it up to this uh, uh, at winch which uh, my Vanna White stand-in otherwise known as Captain Christine can show you so this is a uh, Lubar 65 very very high power uh, 24 volt DC windlass I'll show you or, uh, winch rather I'll show you the other reasons we've got for that and just for orientation so that uh, you know where you are here on this aft deck so this is the aft deck that we're on here right now this guy hiding underneath the protective plastic is our Nogva uh, gearbox we don't have a transmission per se because with a CPP controllable pitch propeller you just change the pitch angle and that's how you get reverse versus forward but we do have reduction gear three to one reduction gear and uh, a hydraulic system inside of that for running the CPP and that's what bolts to the main engine and it's just up on, here on deck hopefully getting ready to be lowered down to this big giant hatch here that's the lid for the big hatch and I'll show you the hatch in a minute it's big enough for both the Gardner engine and this bolted together to come in and out of the boat uh, 
Uh, just to give you a bit of perspective here, this vent box we'll explain to you in a minute, but this vent box is, and this one that matches it over here, this is for intake air coming into the engine room in the workshop, this is for extraction, and then we're going to double these up as being used for our galley as well. A uh, nice cantilevered roof over top of the galley to keep us out of the rain and the uh, sun. And then a uh, ladder kind of construction, I call it, uh, for this arch. This is our main arch here, and it does a bunch of things. It both gives us a place to mount all of our uh, radar and antennas. There's actually a little mini arch that's being made right now that's going to go up, over, and down to protect the open array radar up here, and then give us more places for antennas and GPS, GPS heads. While I'm back here, you can give you a good perspective right above Miss Christine of our paravane system. So uh, we are going to try passive uh, roll stabilization instead of active with fins or Magnus effect stabilizers. And so we have these big A-frames here and they are uh, controlled by little winches and blocks here. And then they are get lowered out and angled off the side about 45 degrees. And then off of the end of this, when it's out, will be a Dyneema line going down about six meters below the surface of the water to what is called a fish or a paravane or a bird. And it looks like a, an airplane fuselage uh, with a, a bulbous uh, fuselage in the middle and two big wings on it. And what they do is plane in the water underneath. And when the boat tries to roll and tilt from one side to the other, these two bearer veins, one on each side, will resist that rolling and help to keep the boat nice and stable. And that's what we're gonna try for the first year or so and see how well that works. So let's take you up onto the aft deck and show you around there. Uh, while I'm passing it, uh, another kind of, not a fair lead, but this one is for a drogue. Uh, basically, like let's think of it as a sea anchor that we can trail behind the boat, and it takes a massive amount of force. These are used in really severe storm situations. One of those things you hope you don't ever have to need to use, but if you do need it, we need something like this, and this has got a stainless steel insert in it, so it's even stronger and won't uh, uh, be worn through by the uh, shackle that we would have on here for the drogue going aft. Uh, stanchions, as I said, are all aluminum. We don't like stainless if we can get away with it. We just have these little guys here because we're using all uh, Dyneema lifelines. And so we have one, two, three spots on the lifelines for the uh, Dyneema to go through. We uh, luggage loop it onto here and then run it up through, if you see the little um, uh, ferrule lead in there, through each of the other stanchions as it goes forward. And then we just have a, a tensioning thing that we tie uh, uh, loops around for the Dyneema to give the lifelines nice and tight. There's that big fair lead I showed you. We have uh, three of them actually, uh, so I can show you the other two over here. And uh, we have these two for different purposes. Uh, this one, for example, is going to be where we have a soft shackle to a, a block and tackle system that's going to go up to the davit that I'll show you in a moment here. And then all of these lines enable us to use this same big 65 Evo Lumar winch, 24 volt, and um, run all of those lines and power them accordingly. Uh, big hatches uh, into the workshop on both sides that we've designed and built here at Naval. Uh, they're going to have uh, solid glass tops on them, hydraulic cylinders, um, for um, or gas strut cylinders rather, to make it easy to open and close them. Here's one of the vent boxes I talked to you about earlier, the one on the other side. This big gaping hole here it lets us look down into the engine room that you can see that segment of the video if you're interested on. There's the two aft mounts for the uh, red Nogva mounts to be going going on to and then the beds continue uh, those are 25 millimeter thick beds as well and they go all the way up to uh, rear gardener motor mounts back here and the two forward gardener motor mounts up there there's the uh, vent a duct coming down from this vent box going all the way to the bottom of the engine room so that the cold fresh air goes down to the bottom and sinks down into there and then as it heats up it rises up 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 and comes out the extraction fans in this box over here and then we have the uh, hatch cover in here and we've sized this so that even when the nogva is bolted to the gardener the entire assembly can come out of the boat without having to cut the deck which is otherwise quite um, a common way of doing it and then uh, take a quick tour here of what will also be our, our aft galley area, outside, gal outside galley. So after they've served their job as vent boxes, we have got a, uh, a marble countertop here, same as in the galley, that goes on here. This sink 
fits into this area here and, and um, gives us a nice hot and cold water into the faucets so that we've got uh, nice sink access. This will just be a marble countertop. And then over on the other side, a little bit tough to see because he's kind of covered up with all sorts of stuff, but you get the idea. So this will be a marble countertop on the, that top there. And then it drops down here. And this surface is where we have the, um, it'll be marble as well, but inset into there is our electric uh, barbecue and grill. So we've got a whole outside galley here, keep the heat and the humidity out of the inside of the boat and just have a lovely place to be cooking up the fish we catch or just whatever else might be um, on the menu for the evening. Uh, these are also maybe an interesting feature for some of you that are interested. So this is an, uh, a completely sealed uh, box, air box up here, and then another one down here. This will all be glass, by the way. So the glass that's 360 around the super salon and comes across the back here. So this would be glass, this would be glass, but this piece here is also glass. But that gives us these two big vent boxes in here, extraction fans, which feed the from out of the um, super salon. They come into this plenum up here, and then I can show you underneath here. Um, so they will come out through those uh, grills that you see along the back there. And if I stick the camera up inside here, there's the other side of the big axial fan. And now you're looking actually into the salon itself. And uh, that is the extraction that pulls all the air out of there. And then here is the lower box. And this has uh, vents like this, which we feature throughout the boat. So these are uh, the lids that I showed you how you can control from the inside by just turning this threaded rod. And then they just would wind themselves down. So we'll have a whole protocol that if we get into really rough conditions and we want to, we think there's any possibility that the boat might do a roll or be really, really... Uh, pitched over to a severe degree and we take lots of water onto the deck we can just run around and quickly close off all of these kind of vents to be able to make them uh, nice and watertight and then they just unthread here and uh, give you lots of space for the air to come in and then there's a fan here that's extracting the air out under power if there's a need for that Another one of our favorite features, I think, is the Sky Bridge. Uh, traditionally called a fly bridge, but we like the name Sky Bridge a bit better. And so we've got these lovely stairs here, and we learned about uh, the safety factor of spiral stairs to our great surprise, frankly, on a, uh, one friend in particular's boat in Fiji. Uh, uh, thank you, Ian. And, you know, you'd think that these things would be less uh, sturdy and, uh, well, not sturdy, but um, just not as seaworthy, right? But in fact, you're going to end up in this cage in here. So even in really rough seas, you've got this handbar here, of course, to hang on to you've got this one but you're you're kind of closed in so uh, the ability to fall off of a staircase which is always a really big concern if the seas kick up is just kind of not eliminated but really lessened by this type of design and frankly it looks pretty cool on top of it all anyways let's go upstairs and uh, show you around quickly up here uh, onto the, the sky bridge uh, of course the big selling feature of this or why we put it in is just visibility I mean have a look at this so in terms of being able to see around you whether it's just sitting on anchor and enjoying the view or whether it's piloting the boat we've just got such fantastic visibility here if you notice uh, we worked really hard with Dennis our designer and so if I take you over to the side here so here's the side deck uh, handrail in the sky bridge and you can see that I can look down from here and I can see the rub rail edge so there's if, if, if this is where the dock would be for example if we were side tying or something so the ability to see the entire boat the only exception is we can't quite see the very aft end of the swim step back in there so we do have that blind spot we have a camera back there that could aid it in a bet with that but otherwise we've got great visibility around the entire boat uh, this framing here, if you're wondering, that goes around the entire periphery of the sky bridge is for glass. So this will be um, three quarter inch thick glass that goes around here. No, I take that back, uh, about 15 millimeters, five eighths of an inch thick. Uh, uh, tinted black because we don't see through it. It's just got a very nice visual effect. Kind of looks like um, an eyebrow around it. And um, so that glass will fit in from the outside into this frame and fill this all in with a nice black contrasting thing. But it, not, not uh, solid black, we can still see through it, uh, but just keeps a bit of the um, design features going in there. The, the more functional sides of it are things like this. So these are three of our 14 solar panels. Each solar panel puts out 320 watts and is uh, a glass construction uh, monocrystalline solar panel uh, in their own aluminum frames and then Naval has built these additional frames and that for these three 
are because this whole frame and these three panels are going to be inserted into this space up here on the uh, front of the um, roof of the boat. And then this is the uh, wind tunnel that I described to you earlier. So on a passage, these panels would sit down flush and that would actually seal along that front end right there. The front end of the solar panels would go down and seal and this would be all covered up. So it'd be nice and seaworthy. But when we anchor, we just, they're hinged. This whole uh, rack is hinged right along back here. And now that whole rack of, of uh, solar panels just tilts up so it is uh, uh, horizontal for best solar effect. But now creates this gorgeous wind tunnel that captures all of the wind. And remember, if we're, on, we're on anchor pretty much all the time. So we know the wind that's always going to come from the bow back and gets uh, captured by this wind tunnel here and then that gets put into we'll give you a better view from down on the on the deck but that's a big giant mist eliminator vent right there and then that feeds into the air plenum that gives the air into the super salon that we show you earlier so now i'm up here i apologize i can't show you the floor area of the uh, sky bridge but you can get the idea uh, earlier on if you saw that segment christine was looking at you from up in here this is one of the other vent or um, hatches that is up here. This is where the helm chair will be and where the nav station will be. So in here is one of those two gorgeous LeBrock helm chairs. Uh, super, super comfortable. And then mounted here is a whole uh, dashboard and uh, monitor set up. So we have two 24 inch touch daylight readable screens up here and then a whole array. Uh, it's it's going to be a fiberglass uh, epoxy um, uh, unit that goes in here, but that has all the same controls as we have downstairs in the main helm station. So throttle, pitch, jog lever, all of that sort of thing. And uh, we, we came to realize as we were doing the design uh, that, that how smart it was going to be to put this in because being in this position and opening in this direction, we'll probably leave this open almost all the time because the roof is overhead. But it means that we can easily pass uh, food, coffee, that kind of thing back and forth to each other. The other thing is we can talk to each other because when you're up here and the other person's down below, it's a, a good distance and it's not, the boat is so well insulated, you just don't get to talk through the walls or whatever. So this just makes it easy to communicate back and forth somebody's sitting in the sofa somebody's up here and uh, we could just talk back and forth and then when we close that hatch down we have a nice upholstered uh, three-piece thing that can sit on top of here and give you a whole little bed to have a nap on or it folds up in kind of a Z sort of shape that would give you a little seat back that you could just up here as a kind of a, a lounge area Perhaps the most interesting feature up here to many of you and, and us as well is what we've come up with for the roof over this sky bridge. So it's very, very light. It's all constructed of rectangular aluminum tubing. And then each one of these rectangular spaces up here between that framing is the exact size of one of our solar panels. So this actually becomes our roof. The solar panels become our roof. So they will be uh, Sika flexed to this aluminum panel up on the top, or aluminum frame rather. So each one of these has a 320 watt solar panel in it that's Sika flexed and sealed to each other and to that roof. And therefore this is completely waterproof up here as well. So eight solar panels up here here on the roof and then to complete the solar array set up three more solar panels sitting back here on their own rack and in time I won't do it right now just so we can get this boat launched but uh, we'll probably make that rack on some rails so I could slide that rack in and out that set of three solar panels back there because they might get uh, they will get on different sun angles some shading from uh, this uh, main arch going up over top of here. So this is where our radar will mount right on top of here. It's a six and a half foot open array uh, radar. And then we're building right now a mini arch that's going to go up over and down on this side to protect that radome and uh, uh, open array and then give us more spots all along that tubing on the next arch that goes up here for GPS heads, VHF antennas, AIS antennas, all that kind of stuff. Uh, then the other neat thing about the roof uh, is that if you look carefully, you'll see that the roof is got a hinge pin coming through here. So this is a stainless steel pin captured inside some Delrin bushings and so on. So this is like a hinge pin. And then what we do is put in, this is, a, this is just temporarily put in, uh, or you just use it from time to time. So a pin goes in here and connects up to another uh, hinged attachment point up here. Now the reason for all of that is that these whole 
sorry to swing you around so much here, but these, uh, these uh, arch mast ladder construction things, so the main mast back here, the arch, is hinged down at the bottom here. And the reason for that is that when we want to reduce our air draft, the distance we have ext extending above the water, we could take this whole arch assembly and fold it down. And as it comes down, it brings the roof with it. So the roof comes, stays parallel to the water, but the roof comes down and ends up sitting on top of these panels right here. So our air draft gets reduced dramatically for either going through canals and under super low bridges or something like that, but also so we can hunker the boat down if we're gonna leave it or, or just be in an area with a hurricane uh, danger, which is not that uncommon for those things to happen. So we can really dramatically drop the air draft of the boat by taking it down that way. So that's our uh, lounge area up here at the front. Again, apologies that the solar panels are kind of taking that up. We're just going to leave it empty for now. We'll have some garden furniture up here to just try out and then we'll see where do we like to sit, where do we like to eat, where do we want a table and we'll build that in later if we'd like to do so. But that's a quick tour for you of the Skybridge on the good ship Mobius. All right, let's take you downstairs. We'll go down these, get a cool shot there for you of the spiraling stairs, but they, they work really, really well. And we're very, very pleased with how they've turned out. Let's go up along the side decks and show you what's going on up here. Uh, of course, hand holds everywhere on a boat uh, and uh, making us a bit safer than handrails running all the way down. We just weld ours on, make them out of uh, aluminum tubing. Here's one of those crane chocks that I mentioned to you. So this is also two inch thick, 50 millimeter thick. Uh, and this is uh, goes down uh, into the framing, I think if I call, recall correctly, about 80 centimeters, so about two and a half feet or so, and welded integrally into the rest of the framing of the boat. So we can lift the entire boat by just one of these. Not that we'd ever do so, but strength-wise, that's how we engineered it. And then there's four, two on each side. So there's this one here, then this guy up at the front. Oh, as we move forward, and uh, again, I have to pardon us for the, the mess, but we are a work in project a process, quite literally. Let me first just show you uh, a better understanding of how that wind tunnel, as I described it, worked. So here we are looking from the bow aft at the sky bridge area. Now you can see how that roof assembly, now you can see where each of the eight solar panels goes in. And then you, I explained to you earlier how that whole roof goes down as we fold down the uh, arch back there. But here is how that solar panel system works. So the solar panels would normally under a passage, let's use this as a proxy for a minute here. So they'll sit down like this, that frame of solar panels, and it will actually seal against the front here when we're in passage mode and uh, be nice and watertight and keep everything protected and no water can get up there. But once we anchor, then we just lift it because the, 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 the um, rack for the solar panels is hinged right across there. And so now you just tilt the uh, whole solar panel system up so it's horizontal. And now you can see how that forms this fabulous wind tunnel to just grab all of this air coming over the bow and projects it up in here through another mist eliminator taking out the salt humidity and then down into the plenum and down through those five diffuser tubes. Looking around the uh, foredeck here, nice big area. We could have lounge chairs and stuff up here if we wanted to. Uh, sometimes with the sun direction and so on, the sun sets in front of you and might be a good spot for that or up in the sky bridge, of course. If you're wondering, these are our door aid boxes. So these will have a door aid vent on top of here and then a silicone cowl uh, that helps to capture the air and direct it down inside of there. The, um, you could take a full wave through that and the reason for all of these vents on the bottom is that the water gets separated out and just goes back onto the deck whereas the air goes through a tube that you can't see that's uh, up right about there in the deck uh, sticking up quite high so the air can go in and down into the inside but the water goes gets redirected and fo flows off to the outside. Here's one, two, three of our big 28 inch 700 centimeter or millimeter uh, hatch opening so lots of light this is all underneath here's all our master cabin so uh, beautiful light and air uh, space underneath it there up here on the front i'll take you down into the four peak in a minute and show you what's going on in there uh, so our four peak is about five meters long altogether so lots and lots of space for uh, storage and um, equipment to go in there and then we have two i think they're called uh, we refer to them at least as dolphin seats they uh, fold up out of the way if we're doing line handling and other things up here so again, pardon all the construction dust and dirt and grime and bits and pieces, but 
a quick tour for you of the whole anchoring deck that we've got up here. This is another one of our Lumar winches. This is a 55. This is mostly for kedging if we get uh, stuck on a bar or something or needing to handle dock lines in huge high wind conditions. This gives us a powered ability to help control the boat. And then this lovely piece of jewelry up here is our Maxwell uh, VWC 4000. So uh, a nice super powerful winch for getting our anchor uh, up off of the bottom and back onto the boat. Uh, all of that happens through this kind of what I call a, a sidewinder setup. So let me put this seat up out of the way here. And so um, these are, this is where the shank of the anchor will come. And then the cheeks of the anchor, we've uh, Dennis engineered and designed this so that the angle and size of those cheeks of the bow roller match with the flukes of the anchor and it gets sucked up nice and tight there so there's no clanging or banging when we're underway and the reason we did all of this i can maybe try to get you a straight down shot is that when we originally had the anchor in its traditional spot which would have been sticking straight out of here it added an, um, just over a meter in length out here because of the huge size of our anchor um, and a very traditional would have worked just fine but boy oh boy it's like a battering ram on the front here and we just worried about what if we some and a ship gets blown into us or uh, what if we're in a dock and we come in bow first which we often do for privacy then you've got this higher huge anchor this giant head banger sticking right over top of the docks which we've been in lots of marinas where that's happening but as you can see here yeah there I can show you so you can see that even when the anchor is all the way up here it's a little bit back from this forward most piece of the bow. So we would strike this if we struck something um, in front of us before we would hit it with the, the big gnarly anchor there. So it just gives us a bit more safety and uh, feeling of some well-being. And so now if I look back at the very hot Captain Christine, it's about, what do you think, 38 today? Something in that neighborhood. So it's, uh, it's a tad warm. It is summer. It is 15th of July here in Turkey. Um, and we're inside of a shipyard with uh, all these lovely radiating heat panels up above us. So it's a tad warm and, uh, and wet here. But uh, you get a nice example of scale of the, of the size of things here. You can also see the scale of the front deck. And then you can get a better sense now of the whole uh, uh, lowering roof assembly up there, the paravanes and the antenna arch over the top. Okay, let me give you a, an external tour here. Captain Christine's gonna come and join me for a bit and we can walk you through this. But uh, I thought some of you, a lot of you have asked you to get a better sense of what the exterior and the underwater portion of the boat is. If you've seen it, I don't know what order we'll put this stuff in, but uh, we refer to this as our nose cone for our snubber line when we're on anchor. This is our side winder, as I call it, anchor position over here where it comes aboard. Uh, we got the bow thruster we'll show you in a minute here. And you could see that bow arch that we had in and then the railing along the side there so we'll just take you fairly quickly here or as quickly as uh, verbose Wayne is able to do uh, remaining very brevity challenged so we do have a bow thruster. It's one of those things where we often will go in the course of a year having only used it three, four, five times simply because we're just not in marinas and that kind of location very often. But it's one of those things kind of like insurance. When you need it, boy, are you ever glad that you've got it. So we've gone to the time and expense of putting it in here and we'll just see how it goes. Made by Vetus, single prop, as you can see. Uh, one nice feature we like because we have to do all of our own maintenance is that these are plastic blades. Now, we do still have a zinc anode in here to protect the bronze um, housing itself, but we should be helped out with anti-fouling and not having to clean the prop uh, quite so difficult with um, it being plastic. So uh, uh, 30 centimeters, but one foot diameter in there, really good size and should help us with that. You can see that uh, we've uh, taken, uh, put this shape in it just to help with the flow and, and, and smooth that out. This is an example of one of our sea chests coming out of there. And then if I come back a little bit further, this is, uh, we just put this in on Friday. So this is for the, one of our two depth sounders. So this is a housing to pr provide a, that um, depth sounder position to be in. This will all get fared in with with a fairing compound to make it a little bit uh, smoother and smooth out the airflow and keep the bubbles away from the transducer. And then providing great scale and contrast is Captain Christine uh, with one of her favorite features um, and mine too, this tiny little Rockna anchor. So she weighs, uh, not Christine, the anchor, let me be clear, uh, 125 kilos. And uh, yes, that's big and yes, that's oversized. And yes, we couldn't be happier because we sleep on that thing literally 
I'd say probably we average 300 days a year. And so this is what lets us sleep quite well at night. Uh, this is our chain. So this is a half inch, um, 13 millimeter actually, a little bit better than half inch uh, galvanized chain that goes onto that, uh, 120 meters of that. So more than enough just depth to let us get into some really deep anchorages when we need to do so. And I'll maybe get the captain to show us these uh, things that are hiding behind for obvious reasons with all the dust here are uh, helm chairs and I'll come around and show you that in just a second here. Well, let me continue quickly down the side here just to show you a few other features of the boat. Uh, kind of nice you can see our, our hull plating here very differently uh, placed out so up above here this is uh, let me get this straight. This is uh, eight millimeter framing from there to there. This is uh, 12 millimeter thick framing here. This is a combination. So on this bottom, these rolled plates, so these have been uh, wheeled into a three dimensional curve and those are 12 millimeter uh, from here back. But for the forward section, they are uh, uh, either 25 or 15 millimeter plate in there. This would be the bow, of course, more likely to be something we would hit uh, if that should uh, happen and it's just one of those things you of course hope it never does but you allow for the fact that it might a container for example that's been a, fallen off a ship and is floating in the water almost impossible sea never going to show up on radar because it's mostly sunk and it, we could get a, a really nasty hit up there with that so we've got thicker plate and then the other thing we've done is the very beginning uh, first meter here this so the first meter lengthwise is a completely welded shut crash bulkhead so that even if we hold this area right here which might be the more likely one to happen uh, it can't get into the rest of the boat at all the worst it could do is flood this section up in here and probably wouldn't keep us from being able to continue underway uh, this uh, guy right here is part of the keel bar so our keel bar actually starts way up there at the um, at the anchor and it's uh, 25 millimeter thick aluminum and it's a minimum of uh, uh, about 35 centimeters uh, in, in uh, width and it comes down and curves around here and becomes essentially a backbone that runs the entire length of the hull non-stop continuous 25 millimeter thick aluminum and goes all the way to the aft end and in sections in the aft end it's more than two meters tall as it goes through the keel and stuff so it just gives us a, a hugely strong uh, non-flexing aluminum hull and then the hull plates are way oversized on purpose. This is also nicely oversized. So this is 10 millimeter aluminum pent, uh, plate that we've bent into this quite um, sort of a U shape here and then welded to the, to the hull. And so we can uh, actually turn the boat around pilings, things like that, uh, not have to worry about you know, rubbing up against something and causing any damage. The whole hull remains unpainted so we don't even lose anything that way. And then you can see that for the stanchions, those posts where the stanchions come through are coming right straight through the rub rails. And so welded at the bottom, welded at the top, Delrin bushings in between and uh, give us these enormously strong aluminum uh, stanchions up there. That's one of those crane um, chocks that I showed you before for lifting the boat out of the water. And uh, you know, I'll just let the rest of it uh, kind of talk for itself here. Uh, you can see, if you saw the portion on the basement, you can see this kicked up area here like this where it goes up. This is where that coffer dam is for uh, active stabilizers, either fins or Magnus Effect ones. If somebody, uh, even us, was to choose to change from the passive paravanes to active stabilizers, this is where they would go, and that's where that coffer dam is. And this plating is uh, also been uh, made thicker for the support of the paravanes if it needs it. And then as we continue back to the aft end here, you can see how the, the keel starts now to come down gives us nice protection for the rudder uh, this is where the prop tube comes out we've got the propeller blades off right now so you can see the bronze housing here for the nogva so a four bladed controllable pitch propeller and then this would normally slide up inside of the, this fitting here this is a rope guard so that this that red felt pen line I put on here is where the edge of this would sit and so there's no point where rope can get around the shaft and uh, would help us reduce the problems when we have uh, a net that we get tangled in maybe or a, a fish line or some rope or something like that. Here's a good example for you. So this is what 25 millimeter aluminum looks like. This is the part of that keel bar I was showing you. So this continues from here all the way to the bow and up to the anchor and then also continues inside the boat back here, back here and all the way to the very aft end of the boat. 
Uh, here's our rudder, massively oversized to help us with steering, especially in uh, following seas kind of situation when we're having a real need for good strong steering. Uh, this hole, if you're wondering about it, is very purposely here. Um, and uh, if you need that, that's because if we needed to remove the, um, the propeller shaft, which it happens every couple of years typically when you need to replace your cutlass bearing maybe. And so this uh, hole in the uh, rudder here makes it possible for us to swing the rudder all the way over to its full 45 degrees to line this hole up with the propeller shaft. We take the propeller off and now the shaft comes out through this hole and it prevents us from having to drop the rudder and just makes the job uh, a much less um, arduous one. Anyways, let's go back up and have a look at the seats that I think Captain Christine has got for us to uh, have a quick look at. Well, as you can see, uh, things are, 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 are just uh, filthy here. This is a, a working shipyard, so there's an awful lot of dust going around from all of the different boats, us included. Uh, so we keep these guys covered up because they're going to be put on board fairly soon. So this is one of our two helm chairs. These are made by Lebrock. We had them on our previous boat and loved them. When you're doing long passages and when it's either just one of us because we're both ex-single-handers or now the luxury of being double-handers, uh, use live in this chair so when you're on watch you're in this chair most of the time so this is not a luxury this is a requirement in terms of just being able to be in a chair for hours and hours and hours at a time and be comfortable and uh, come you know awake and safe so you can see it's got great bolsters on the side here so you don't get pushed back and forth when the boat is underway we'll have a five-point harness on here just if it really really gets bad the arms all are adjustable and come up and down if you're wondering what this is for it's for lumbar support uh, me in particular i've got a nasty back uh, lower back and um, having that extra lumbar support and being able to adjust it is just fantastic so they tilt they move they swivel uh, they go up and down so a great set of bases here that they'll fit onto and all the adjustments for up and down and swiveling and moving the back uh, there's going to be fabulous uh, and i'm sorry i don't even remember anymore is this one's the one that goes inside in, in the main helm and then the other guy's a bit different color and a bit different style for upstairs in the sky bridge but both of them by, made by Labrock and uh, both of them we're very much looking forward to sitting in uh, they have I won't bother to connect it up and put it in but this is the uh, footrest that connects to the frame this is all um, uh, solid uh, uh, aluminum anodized aluminum uh, construction so going to stand up very well and you got a nice footrest that just sits down here off of the chair to keep you even more comfortable so those are our helm chairs Okay, let me give you a, an external tour here. Captain Christine's gonna come and join me for a bit and we can walk you through this. But uh, I thought some of you, a lot of you have asked you to get a better sense of what the exterior and the underwater portion of the boat is. If you've seen it, I don't know what order we'll put this stuff in, but uh, we refer to this as our nose cone for our snubber line when we're on anchor. This is our side winder, as I call it, anchor position over here where it comes aboard. Uh, we got the bow thruster we'll show you in a minute here. And you could see that bow arch that we had in and then the railing along the side there so we'll just take you fairly quickly here or as quickly as uh, verbose Wayne is able to do uh, remaining very brevity challenged so we, we do have a bow thruster it's one of those things where we often will go uh, in the course of a year having only used it three four five times simply because we're just not in marinas and that kind of location very often but it's one of those things kind of like insurance when you need it boy are you ever glad that you've got it so we've gone to the time and expense of putting it in here and we'll just see how it goes made by Vetus single prop as you can see uh, one nice feature we like because we have to do all of our own maintenance is that these are plastic blades now we do still have a zinc anode in here to protect the bronze um, housing itself but we should be helped out with anti-fouling and not having to clean the prop uh, quite so difficult with um, it being plastic so uh, uh, 30 centimeters but one foot diameter in there really good size and should help us with that you can see that uh, we've uh, uh, taken uh, put this shape in it just to help with the flow and, and and smooth that out this is an example of one of our sea chests coming out of there and then if I come back a little bit further this is uh, we just put this in on Friday so this is for the one of our two depth sounders so this is a housing to pr provide a, that um, depth sounder position to be in this will all get fair in with uh, fairing compound to make it a little bit uh, smoother and smooth out the airflow and keep the bubbles away from the transducer and then providing great 
scale and contrast is Captain Christine uh, with one of her favorite features um, and mine too, this tiny little Rockna anchor. So she weighs, uh, not Christine, the anchor, let me be clear, uh, 125 kilos and uh, yes that's big and yes that's oversized and yes we couldn't be happier because we sleep on that thing literally I'd say probably we average 300 days a year. And so this is what lets us sleep quite well at night. Uh, this is our chain. So this is a half inch, um, 13 millimeter actually, a little bit better than half inch uh, galvanized chain that goes onto that, uh, 120 meters of that. So more than enough depth to let us get into some really deep anchorages when we need to do so. And I'll maybe get the captain to show us these uh, things that are hiding behind for obvious reasons with all the dust here, our uh, helm chairs. And I'll come around and show you that in just a second here. Well, let me continue quickly down the side here just to show you a few other features of the boat. Uh, kind of nice, you can see our, our hull plating here very differently uh, placed out. So up above here, this is, uh, let me get this straight. This is uh, eight millimeter framing from there to there. This is uh, 12 millimeter thick framing here. This is a combination. So on this bottom, these rolled plates, so these have been uh, wheeled into a three-dimensional curve, and those are 12 millimeter uh, from here back, but for the forward section, they are uh, uh, either 25 or 15 millimeter plate in there. This would be the bow, of course, more likely to be something we would hit uh, if that should uh, happen, and it's just one of those things you, will, of course, hope it never does, but you allow for the fact that it might. A container, for example, that's been a, fallen off a ship and is floating in the water almost impossible sea never going to show up on radar because it's mostly sunk and it, we could get a, a really nasty hit up there with that so we've got thicker plate and then the other thing we've done is the very beginning uh, first meter here this so the first meter lengthwise is a completely welded shut crash bulkhead so that even if we hold this area right here which might be the more likely one to happen uh, it can't get into the rest of the boat at all the worst it could do is flood this section up in here and probably wouldn't keep us from being able to continue underway uh, this uh, guy right here is part of the keel bar so our keel bar actually starts way up there at the um, at the anchor and it's uh, 25 millimeter thick aluminum and it's a minimum of uh, uh, about 35 centimeters uh, in, in uh, width and it comes down and curves around here and becomes essentially a backbone that runs the entire length of the hull non-stop continuous 25 millimeter thick aluminum and goes all the way to the aft end and in sections in the aft end it's more than two meters tall as it goes through the keel and stuff so it just gives us a, a hugely strong uh, non-flexing aluminum hull and then the hull plates are way oversized on purpose. This is also nicely oversized. So this is 10 millimeter aluminum pent, uh, plate that we've bent into this quite um, sort of a U shape here and then welded to the, to the hull. And so we can uh, actually turn the boat around pilings, things like that, uh, not have to worry about you know, rubbing up against something and causing any damage. The whole hull remains unpainted so we don't even lose anything that way. And then you can see that for the stanchions, those posts where the stanchions come through are coming right straight through the rub rails. And so welded at the bottom, welded at the top, Delrin bushings in between and uh, give us these enormously strong aluminum uh, stanchions up there. That's one of those crane um, chocks that I showed you before for lifting the boat out of the water. And uh, you know, I'll just let the rest of it uh, kind of talk for itself here. Uh, you can see, if you saw the portion on the basement, you can see this kicked up area here like this where it goes up. This is where that coffer dam is for uh, active stabilizers, either fins or Magnus Effect ones. If somebody, uh, even us, was to choose to change from the passive paravanes to active stabilizers, this is where they would go, and that's where that coffer dam is. And this plating is uh, also been uh, made thicker for the support of the paravanes if it needs it. And then as we continue back to the aft end here, you can see how the, the keel starts now to come down gives us nice protection for the rudder uh, this is where the prop tube comes out we've got the propeller blades off right now so you can see the bronze housing here for the nogva so a four bladed controllable pitch propeller and then this would normally slide up inside of the, this fitting here this is a rope guard so that this that red felt pen line I put on here is where the edge of this would sit and so there's no point where rope can get around the shaft and uh, would help us 
reduce the problems when we have uh, a net that we get tangled in maybe or a, a fish line or some rope or something like that. Here's a good example for you. So this is what 25 millimeter aluminum looks like. This is the part of that keel bar I was showing you. So this continues from here all the way to the bow and up to the anchor and then also continues inside the boat back here, back here and all the way to the very aft end of the boat. Uh, here's our rudder, uh, massively oversized to help us with steering, especially in uh, following seas kind of situation when we're having a real need for good strong steering. Uh, this hole, if you're wondering about it, is very purposely here. Um, and uh, if you need that, that's because if we needed to remove the, um, the propeller shaft, which happens every couple of years typically when you need to replace your cutlass bearing maybe. And so this uh, hole in the uh, rudder here makes it possible for us to swing the rudder all the way over to its full 45 degrees to line this hole up with the propeller shaft. We take the propeller off and now the shaft comes out through this hole and it prevents us from having to drop the rudder and just makes the job uh, a much less um, arduous one. Anyways, let's go back up and have a look at the seats that I think Captain Christine has got for us to uh, have a quick look at. Well, as you can see, uh, things are, 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 are just uh, filthy here. This is a, a working shipyard, so there's an awful lot of dust going around from all of the different boats, us included. Uh, so we keep these guys covered up because they're going to be put on board fairly soon. So this is one of our two helm chairs. These are made by Lebrock. We had them on our previous boat and loved them. When you're doing long passages and when it's either just one of us because we're both ex-single-handers or now the luxury of being double-handers, uh, you live in this chair. So when you're on watch, you're in this chair most of the time. So this is not a luxury. This is a requirement in terms of just being able to be in a chair for hours and hours and hours at a time and be comfortable and uh, com you know awake and safe. So you can see it's got great bolsters on the side here so you don't get push back and forth when the boat is underway. We'll have a five point harness on here just if it really, really gets bad. The arms all are adjustable and come up and down. If you're wondering what this is for, it's for lumbar support. Uh, me in particular, I've got a nasty back, uh, lower back, and um, having that extra lumbar support and being able to adjust it is just fantastic. So they tilt, they move, they swivel, uh, they go up and down. So a great set of bases here that they'll fit onto and all the adjustments for up and down and swiveling and moving the back. Uh, there's is going to be fabulous uh, and I'm sorry I don't even remember anymore is this one's the one that goes inside in in the main helm and then the other guy's a bit different color and a bit different style for upstairs in the sky bridge but both of them by, made by Labrock and uh, both of them we're very much looking forward to sitting in uh, they have I won't bother to connect it up and put it in but this is the uh, footrest that connects to the frame this is all um, uh, solid uh, uh, aluminum anodized aluminum uh, construction so going to stand up very well and you got a nice footrest that just sits down here off of the chair to keep you even more comfortable so those are our helm chairs here's one of my favorite views of the, the boat looking straight up at this lovely massive hull. So there's that nose cone we've described to you for our snubber line. Here's the uh, bow mast. Here's the sidewinder uh, bow roller for the uh, anchor to come aboard on. And then here's a look at that uh, massive keel bar that goes all the way up and then all the way to the back of the boat. So I use my fingers for a bit of reference so you can see what this guy looks like. We've purposely left the plating, we pushed the plating back a bit to give us this section here. So if we butt up against something or uh, touch something up here, you're just touching right against the edge of this. So this um, keel bar comes in about 40 centimeters here and the inside so you can get an idea of just how massive and strong that is and then it just continues down the entire length of the boat literally like a spine or a, a backbone for it you get a bit of a sense too of just how you know wave piercing we are what a narrow entry point we've got which helps a great deal with efficiency and lack of bow wave and all that kind of stuff so uh, we're enormously happy with the work that uh, our naval architect dennis did and that naval has done with building a boat that should keep us very safe and take us literally anywhere in the world Let's take it slow, where you go, I go to. And if you hit the bottom, I'm going down with you. Let's take it slow, who cares where we gotta be? You know you'll have a good time wherever you're.